In 100 days, 1 million people were killed here. In 1994, the largest massacre since World War II broke out here. For Rwanda, which had only 7 million people at that time, it is equivalent to one out of every seven people being killed. The 100 days of Rwanda were called hell on earth. The whole street is full of people. Cars can't drive past. Rwanda at that time was divided into two major ethnic groups. They classified those with assets of more than 10 cows as Tutsis. For our convenience in remembering, we call him the Great Clan. The poor at home are called Hutu. We are called small clans. After the colonists invaded Rwanda, they chose Great Clan to govern the country. After the end of colonization, they left power to the small clans. This led the small clans, who accepted power, to take revenge on the great clan. The small clan has experienced persecution by the great clan for many years. There are two forces in Rwanda. The leaders at that time tried to find a way to reconcile, but the leader was attacked. We still don't know who the murderer is. Since then, the two clans have been fighting continuously. Even their own people have to rely on ID cards to identify themselves. Maybe neighbors who get along well. He will kill you tomorrow because of different clan. Paul is a room manager at an international hotel. He is very clever and integrity. As a small clan, he makes many friends. He purposely brought back expensive cigars from abroad. He went to talk about something. There are colonels of peacekeeping forces, generals of small clans and variable businessmen here. Paul never thought his family will be killed. And the reason is very simple. Paul's wife is from great clan. Because no one can tell the identity without looking at the ID card. Paul took out his ID card and pretended to be calm. He lied that his wife came from a small clan. Neighbors are the same. Look at the scenes of smashing burning and robbing everywhere in the street. Paul wants to get out of here as soon as possible. But it didn't take long. They were found anyway. Paul wants to explain. But the officer didn't listen at all and stuffed the gun into him. Let Paul prove that he is not a traitor. But this is his wife and children. Paul was frightened. Paul offered to exchange money for their lives. The officer offered 10,000 francs each. This is the price for Paul to buy a cigar. In Rwanda, a cigar is worth a human life. He took out all his valuables, saved his wife and two children first, collecting everyone's belongings. Then Paul gave the belongings to the officer. But these belongings are not as good as the life of a cockroach. He intends to redeem everyone's life with 100,000 francs. The officer agreed. He went back to the hotel and took out all the money. Paul saved their lives with 100,000 francs. The boss also left the hotel to him. The boss is ready to leave here. Paul settled his wife and children. He changed into a suit. This is an upscale hotel. Paul must keep his style. Due to the influence of war, employees no longer work hard. Paul can only turn to his superiors. Printed a notice to make the hotel operate normally. The next day, a large number of refugees poured into the hotel. During the civil war in Rwanda, a reporter went out to interview. No sooner had he left the hotel than he came back. What is the reason? Because he only walked out of 200 meters, the reporter collected the material. The militia of the small clan searched everywhere for the great clan. They looted everywhere. But because of the presence of foreign tourists and peacekeeping troops, the small hotel became an oasis in the desert. There are peacekeepers at the entrance of the hotel, but they can't fire a bullet. If they want to stop this massacre, they can only expect the arrival of the mediator army. All the rich local people came to this hotel. The hotel is full of people from great clan, but there is only one room left in the hotel. But at this moment, rescue vehicles drive into the hotel, open the door, they are all orphans. The orphans looked at Paul. Good Paul can't bear it. Gave the last room to orphans. After thanks, the woman turned and got on the vehicle again. There are another 10. I'll be back soon. Paul asked the colonel if he could take the children to the station. It's safer there. But this time he was disappointed. I'm overwhelmed in my refugee camp. Paul is very helpless. Paul found the reporter. Paul wants the reporter to report the relevant situation. He firmly believes Western countries will definitely start rescue after seeing violent punishment. But this time he was even more disappointed. Yeah, and if no one intervenes, it's still a good thing to show. The reporter is pessimistic because the reporter has long recognized the true face of Western politicians who will come without interests. The next day, the expected mediator finally arrived at the hotel. But they are not here to stop the war, but to pick up all the citizens of Western countries. In Rwanda, Paul and the Rwandan natives will be abandoned. All the relationships he built 
are bullshit. No one can help. There is nothing peacekeeping forces can do. Someone can even bring a puppy, but he can't take away a Rwandan child. The reporter gave all the money to compare his Rwandan wife. But what's the use of money now? The bus drove away. In the heavy rain, there are only another group of people who don't know where to go. Now there are only Rwandans left in the hotel. The next day, Paul was awakened by a pistol. The militia wants to demobilize everyone in the hotel. They need to find a great clan hidden here. Paul bought himself 10 minutes. He called the president of Belgian Airlines. Say goodbye to him. Say something to thank him for his promotion. And then prepare for death. But the soldier suddenly called him. Lie to me! Paul never expected. The call worked wonders. But then they can only rely on themselves. Many people here know rich or powerful people from abroad. Paul asked them to contact these people. Tell them what happened to them. Then say goodbye to them sincerely. Let them bear a sense of guilt. Try to get them to help themselves. This method is very effective. Let some people get guarantee successfully. People in the hall. Their mood is completely different. Some people cheered with their arms. Some people's hearts are dead. Paul's family is also on the list. But when his family got on the bus, he looked back. He can't watch these people stay here. He locked the barrier. He left here after seeing off his family. However, they have just left. A traitor in the hotel told a small clan about it. The clan is trying to intercept the vehicles of the peacekeeping forces. Paul heard the news. He called the clan general. The people on board were detained. Fortunately, the army sent by the general arrived in time, saved the lives of his wife and children. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. You said you'd never be a new head. You are a liar! Shh, 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 shh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Papa. Papa, Mama. The militia no longer provides water and electricity. How do they drink water? Now, the only water they can drink comes from this swimming pool. Thousands of people are in the hotel. The water in the swimming pool is drunk a lot. The general who helped came to ask for something in return. All Paul can get is money. But the paper money under the wall became rubbish. The general left. Paul lost his last protection. A sudden rocket launcher. It indicates that the militia of the small clan is about to invade the hotel. Paul suddenly remembered something. He still has a fortune in the hotel safe. He called the general to the hotel with him, opened the safe, gave him everything. But the general didn't plan to go back to the hotel, but evacuate to the new headquarters. Paul is in a hurry. He scolded the general. Now, the resistance of the great clan has gained an advantage, and the general has been put on the list of war criminals. He is bound to be convicted. Unless he saves the refugees in the hotel, everyone will prove that the general was not involved in the massacre. The general is ready to draw his gun, but he was afraid of going to court martial. He can only take Paul back to the hotel, but the militia of the small clan has occupied this place. The general drove them all away. Paul looked for a wife, but he couldn't find it. Just when Paul thought they were dead, he went to the bathroom and opened the shower curtain. They've gone. They've gone. <gasps> what were you going to do with this? <laughs> All Rwandans in the hotel will be evacuated. Paul locked the hotel gate. Paul doesn't know when the hotel will reopen. Everyone got in the car. There are homeless refugees all the way. But the strange thing is the T. The referees are still going in the opposite direction. A few whistles. The militia of the small clan is escorting them. Prepare for a mass massacre. A group of people emerge from the forest. This is the army of the great clan. The militia of the small clan is no match at all. They were quickly defeated. Paul's family arrived at the refugee camp. They boarded the bus far away from the war. They are finally safe. The 1994 Rwandan massacre caused nearly 1 million people to die. War always hurts civilians. At such a time of crisis, Paul is in danger and give everything. Save 1,268 refugees. He is also a hero of Rwanda. Keep us away from war. Cherish peace. I'm Robin. See you next time.